Meet Stuart Hall, a 6'2", 200-pound speed running back from Boynton Beach, Florida. He's looking to fulfill his dream of being a college running back after growing up poor and being told by countless college coaches he's not good enough for a scholarship. Now with a few opportunities to walk on out of school, can he become the greatest walk-on player ever? Look at all these schools offering him as a walk-on but didn't want to give him a scholarship. Shake my head. But Stuart Hall knows he needs to prove himself and what better place to do that than at Colorado where you have two of the best college football players in Travis Hunter and Shador Sanders and a great coach in Deion Sanders who's all about proving yourself and becoming the best player you can be. So we end up committing there, choosing the jersey number 11. And now looking at that chart here, it looks like Stuart Hall didn't have to fight for the starting position as he was just given to it as he jumped from fourth to first string. And now looking at our stats here, you can see he has 86 speed, 82 acceleration, 76 break tackle. That's decent stats, but they're going to need to jump if you want to dominate and become the greatest walk-on player ever. But I took a quick peek at quarterback and cornerback. And why is Shador not starting? Who is this cold kid? What is going on here? And why is Travis Hunter not starting? Why am I seeing 73 overalls for two top 10 players in all of college football? But regardless, we start off our season here with Stuart Hall against our in-state rivals, Colorado State, for a Rocky Mountain showdown. And we start off with a four-yard rush for our first carry. And then our third engine inches here, Stuart Hall gets the first down and more as he gets a nice four-yard gain. Now on third and seven, Coach Sanders calls a wide receiver screenplay. The QB just holds the ball. Cuz might be acoustic. But our team was fortunate enough to get points on our drive as we kicked the field goal. And now defense got to stop. And now we got to drive down the field again as our QB turns up the heat with that option play. And then throws a dart to our receiver and hands the ball to me. And mama, your son just scored six like a touchdown. Stuart Hall punches that ball in, getting his first touchdown of his collegiate career. And he couldn't be more happy as his family's back home watching him on his TV and cheering him on. But now on 2nd and 12 here, I cut out to the outside on a nice little sneaky wheel route and we catch the defense lacking as we get a 16 yard reception here. And now on the next play, 2nd and 1, can we get the first down? And we do as we just narrowly got that one. And then on 3rd and 8, our QB throws us a dart and how did I just get in the air like that? I did tell you he was the greatest walk-on player ever. He could run and fly! And don't forget touchdowns as he walks into the end zone on this nice 3 yard touchdown run. Shout out to the O-line man. Beautiful blocking for Stuart Hall right here. And then on our next possession, we get a nice three-yard gain there. And now it's nearing the end of the third quarter. We're up by 24. This game is pretty much over. But Stuart Hall still wants to eat and doesn't want to take the position he's been put in for granted as he gets his nice nine-yard touchdown reception. Look at this kid. He could run the ball, catch the ball, run routes. He could do it all to all the viewers and supporters watching right now. How does it feel to be in the presence of greatness in Stuart Hall, man? And if you haven't already, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new. I'm trying to hit 10k subscribers for a new college football game drop. Please help me reach it. And I say this as Stuart Hall couldn't even reach the first down yard line. But we end off this game just still punishing and destroying that D-line. And they finally get a stop here. Bringing this game to a close. But your boy, Stuart Hall, still went off. Went crazy. Player of the game. 71 yards. 2 TDs. 35 yards receiving and another receiving touchdown. And now in game number two, we're going against the FCS school, the FCS Midwest Kodiaks. It says they're own six, which is crazy because they're playing FCS opponents, but <laughs> what made them want to play us? That's all I'm going to say. As on second and four, your boy gets the first down with a nice five-yard rush. Then now on second and nine, oh my, you see that pancake? The O-line put in work. The Colorado offensive line making my job way easier with these beautiful blocks. And then for some reason, coach calls a draw on fourth and seven. And we almost got it, but sadly got stopped short. We're back near the red zone on our following offensive possession. And they're starting off on first and ten, handing the ball off to Hall. And he's going to run it and speed down the hole, set up by the blockers for a nice 14-yard gain. Then we get a calm little five-yard one here. And then coach sum me out while the team scored a touchdown. There's something we don't know about when it comes to playing time and the amount of carries I'm getting. But let me hold off on that as it's nearing the end of the first half. And we should be up by way more on the FCS team as I catch this beautiful 16-yard pass. And now in second and three, our QB throws a dot to Jimmy Horn Jr. for a 22-yard TD. Now in the second half here, and it seems like Coach heard my concerns about the lack of carries as he starts feeding me the ball here. And on second and nine, we cut to the outside and get a big gainer 
and I spin, but I probably should have just kept going straight. But I can't get mad at this groove we're starting to pick up as we start to get more carries, which equals more yards, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this big gainer I get right here. And then on third and nine here, Colt Sanders, trust me, with another run play here as we cut straight through the middle. And oh my gosh, we pick up the first down in the red zone. First and goal, and our QB throws it to a receiver for a tutty. Now on our next offensive possession here, let's see if we can take one to the house. As I try to cut it to the outside, spin back in, it clearly didn't work out. First and 10 here, we get stopped, only gain three yards right there, which eventually leads to a fourth and 15, and instead of kicking a field goal, we decide to go for it, and I cut straight through the middle and get jiggy. Ooh, I thought I had the speed to break away for the touchdown, but we get caught, and then they score the touchdown without me subbed in, man. Team just eating off my back. And then on third and inches, when they could have just used me to run right through the middle, they decided to throw a fader that actually works, and then they scored a touchdown with it, man. But we ended the game off on 108 yards on 16 rushing attempts and 36 receiving yards, and now we're facing against the Fresno State Bulldogs, and let's see if Stuart Hall can lead his team to a 3-0 start on the season. Down first and 10, you get an HB dive through the middle, and then on third and run, Stuart Hall runs a nice little flat, and GET OFF ME! Breaks through that defender's tackle and gets the first down on that five yard reception. And then on the very next play, I run an unscripted corner route and the QB hits me. And look at this block. Oh my gosh, we're gonna take it all the way. Stuart Hall with a 68 yard touchdown reception. Oh my gosh, his first reception touchdown of the year. And we start this game all strong in our home stadium, seven zip. And now we're back on offense after our defense got an incredible stop. And we're just bulldozing through the defense as I just keep getting four, five yard carries, which just adds up and adds up and gets us down the field. And now on first and goal, I just run straight through the middle and put up six on that scoreboard, baby. Let's go. Now it's the end of the first half here. We're up four points. Let's see if we can get a last second miracle touchdown. And we get pushed out of bounds. But Stuart Hall, that was a beautiful attempt. I'm telling you, I feel like we're going to get a return touchdown in this video. Just watch and wait. Because it's going to happen sooner or later, as on third and six, I could have got the ball, but instead my QB wanted to be dumb and throw an interception. But thankfully, the Bulldogs didn't capitalize after our turnover, and we got the ball back in Stuart Hall's hands. Let's see if we can cook up. Second and eight here, Stuart Hall just runs and gets through the middle, gets a nice six-yard gain there, and then he starts spamming the circle button after he clatches his flat route pass, and then now on third and six, we're trying to get open, but he hits our teammate for the touchdown, and we're now up 21-10. With the ball back, it's looking like we're about to have a W, but let me not say too much as I don't want to jinx anything. And now I'm first and 10 here. I'm pass blocking. Look look at the blocks I'm setting for my mans as he throws a crazy, stupid throw, which leads to an interception. And now we're even on a turnover board on each side. And it seems like they finally capitalized off a turnover and scored a touchdown, but missed the field goal kick? But third and 11 here, Hall gets open on an out route and just cuffs up field and gets that first down. And then on another third and seven here, Hall's gonna get open and QB hits us and we can get another first down marker here with under two minutes remaining, second and 14, this game is over. With Stuart Hall getting another play of the game with 102 yards receiving, a touchdown and 36 yards rushing. And now we're going against the Oregon State Beavers who have a better team than us, but we're 3-0. So let's see what we could do, and how we match up. And starting off here with this return by Stuart Hall. He gained 14 yards, but we couldn't capitalize on that drive. So on our next offensive drive, the ball gets handed to me near the goal line. And I cut to the outside for a five-yard gain. And then I get hit on this nice little flat route. But I couldn't get any yards and couldn't cut up field. And then my QB sells me on this option play. And we lose four yards. But then Coach Sanders forces him to redeem himself and hits me. And we get a nice 11-yard gain off of that. And then on third and three, play action pass. And what is he doing? Is he got to be a cool stick or something. Put your door in, coach. Please, put your son in. Please. Now it's the start of the second half here. We're only up three points, bro. We need to put more points on the board. And I try to set the tone for the second half here as I got a nice 31-yard return right there. And then I cut to the outside and use that speed to gain that first down. And then now on third and three, HB dive through the middle. Oh my God, these blocks are beautiful and help us gain another first down. But now on this pivotal third and seven, Coach calls an HB slip screen, and I run it perfectly and beautifully, and we get to the outside and get that nice first down. And then I'm going to let y'all guess what happened next. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell y'all. Coach subbed me out, and the offense could have scored. I wonder why. And now look at us. We're down to the booty-ass Oregon State Beavers. But look at me. I'm getting beautiful yardage, and then our receiver, Amorion Miller, gets called for a clipping penalty? I don't even know what that is. 
But then on 36 here, look at this dumbass throw he closed to me, bro. That was a screen pass, and the QB waited till the last second till I was at the sideline to throw the ball, bro. This QB needs to go. I need Shadur. I need Shadur. Like, like, throw up the watch. I'm throwing up my watch right now. I'm throwing it up like it's the Batman signal. Shador, save me! But we end off the game with a pitiful and disgusting nine total rushing attempts. Coach, what are you doing? Feed me the ball. And then now, guess what? We're going up against a juggernaut, 16th ranked in the country, Oregon Ducks. Holy. I'm just, holy. I'm just praying I don't get injured, man. I'm just praying Stuart Hall don't get injured. But starting off here, third and 11, first quarter, and my QB gets absolutely pummeled and then fumbles the ball. And then they're going to take it to the house, to the bar, to the cribbo, in our house. Wow. And then I fumble the ball. This is great. Wow. Just bad stuff happening over and over. This is karma for coach, man, for not feeding me that ball. Shouldn't have lost that last game. But regardless, I'm going to just try to do the best I can with what they give me. And then on first and 10 here, we're cutting to the outside. Oh, we almost got that first down. We almost could have took it to the house right there. But on third and through, we do get that first down. And we want more. As it looks like I could have taken that all the way. Oh, my God. I almost had it. But we finally get fed in the red zone. And we score that touchdown. And look, coach, this is what happens when you feed me. Great things happen. Like us scoring. Which leads to us possibly winning the games. And now at the beginning of the second half here, the score is still tied 7-7. to seven, And I look to set a statement as I lead off and start off with a big return right there. But coach wasn't feeding me. And the offense couldn't score and capitalize. Now on our next offense possession, we need to score here at least a field goal to keep this game competitive. We're in the fourth quarter. The game's almost over as we get a decent chunk of yards on that speed option play. And then I shoot through the middle on this HB dive play, gain that first down. And on another first and 10, we cut to the outside and look at all those Oregon defenders and no blockers blocking for me, which is why we couldn't get a touchdown, but we did get a field goal on that. And then Oregon matched that field goal. And now with less than one second left, can Stuart Hall do the unthinkable and take this one to the Baja to take us into OT? And he couldn't. We end the game off with 87 rushing yards on 17 attempts. And now we're facing the Sun Devils looking to avoid our third straight loss. And we start off terribly down seven zip. First quarter here. Stuart Hall, please make something shake. As on first and 10, we try to get jiggy. Cut to the outside. You can come back in and get that first down on 11 yard rush. Then second and 10 here, we want a nice little outside play. And then I get subbed out and I come back in on defense for a field goal block because the defense gave up another score. But anything is possible in college football. So Stuart Hall is going to keep his head high. Get off and me! And then for possibly the run of the day, Stuart Hall gets jiggy, breaks tackles, spins, jokes. Oh my gosh. That was a beautiful 24-yard rush. Doing it all. Trying to put the team on his back. When the team is down, he's trying to lift them up, uplift them, and try to make something out of nothing. And then our QB gets sacked and ends that possession. And with less than two minutes remaining in the first half, Stuart Hall, we need you. Please make some shake here. First and 10, he catches a beautiful pass, cuts to the outside, should have went out of bounds, but it's cool because we have plenty of time remaining, and he catches another pass through the middle, 12-yard gain right there, and then 20 seconds left. QB, those, this nigga fumbles. Oh, I'm done, man. I'm done. No way. That was a disgusting turn of events right there as we're now down 21 zip. I need to make some shake here, get a big gain, possibly a score. Wait, wait. No way. That was the putter. Take it to the crib. All the way. Keep running, Stuart. Keep running, Stuart. Run, Stuart. Run. Let's go. He runs for the 104-yard return. That's got to be That's not a record. There's something you don't know about. But we get a big momentum gainer right there. And then the Sun Devils get too cocky and miss this field goal, which puts all the momentum on our side. Now we have to score here, put a little pressure on their backs, and see if they'll fold under pressure. And as Hall runs for this 8-yard gain right here, and then on second and 10 here, he runs for a nice little five-yard gain right here. And then now fast forward a few plays later, first and 10, I catch this nice little pass and get us that nice first down gain. And then we run the same play back and get another first down gain off of it. The defense is leaving everything underneath wide open. So I decided to run it back again and we get a nice beautiful gain off of it. And then I get subbed out and we lose the game. But we end off with 7-3 rushing yards. And the coach got to hate me because why do I only have 10 rushing attempts? And then I led the team in receiving as a running back. And look at our stats here, man. 3-3, three 0-3 three, oh in the conference. 
we got 421 rushing yards with 87 attempts. I should definitely have over 100 attempts in six games, bro. There's something we don't know about, but we're playing in Arizona next week, and I'm pissed off. If the season doesn't turn around, I am leaving Colorado and transferring after a season. After our first six games at Colorado, we finished with 421 yards rushing and 295 receiving yards with six total touchdowns. Although it's a decent start, everyone on the team will have to come together and play better as we're currently and plan to at least make a bowl game. So let's see what we can cook up. Starting off on our final stretch of the season, we'll be facing the Arizona Wildcats who are currently 2-4, and four, so this should be a dub if we play together and move tag. And Stewart Hall decides to come out putting them legs to work as he kicks off the game with a few decent runs. But then our kryptonite and worst enemy is our QB because just, just look at this, bro. Throwing interceptions, bro. After we were driving down the field on a good opening drive, he just ends it all like that. But thankfully, Arizona couldn't capitalize off that turnover, and we're back on offense, and I'm looking to put some points on that board. And you could tell Stewart's locked in by this next play when he's just running over these players and putting bodies on the floor. Now in first and 10, we're near the red zone. Let's see what Stewart Hall can do as he breaks the tackle and get past the yellow marker, gets past a group of Wildcat defenders, and gets through that. Oh my gosh, Stewart Hall, look at that kid run. He is for sure carrying this offense right now, and he continues to do that as he gets six more yards on that second down play. And then on third and six, he gets smacked by the D-line as our O-line couldn't do anything. But thankfully, we put points on the board like Stuart Hall said he was going to do as we're now up 3-0 and look to put more points on the board as Stuart Hall breaks for another run and gets another huge game. And we ended the half with another field goal on top of the one we already have. And now we're getting the ball to start off the second half here. And I'm running the ball back. Let's see if we can make some out of nothing as we sadly get stopped. But still had a 33-yard return No, And starting off here on second and seven, I get open. My QB hits me. And we get a nice three-yard reception right there. Then on third and run, we run the ball up to the side and get the first down plus more. Leading to Colt Sanders calling a pass play on fourth and 17. When we could have just got a field goal. And the QB just threw it up to nowhere, bro. Now on 3rd and 13 on this next possession here, I get the ball. And you know I'm going to go for that first and as we get that 14-yard reception right there. And then look at Stuart Hall being a great teammate on this next play as I set the block and what should have been a first down. But my teammate ran out of bounds. Regardless though, we're now in the fourth quarter and what has been a mostly quiet game as I break off for this big 16-yard rush right there. And then on 4th and 3, Coach takes me out and let's see what our QB does. Oh, he, he caught that? I'm just surprised it wasn't an interception. Thank God. And then we get absolutely stuffed on the two-point conversion. Regardless, though, we took the dub, ran for over 100 yards, got a tutty. That's all you could ask for. And now we're playing against the UCLA Bruins. Let's see what we could do in this beautiful Rose Bowl Stadium. As we're bringing the ball up on the kickoff, and if I can I get jiggy, can I? Almost got jiggy there. But it's cool, though, because I'm first to 10 here. I'm going to get a calm little six-yard run right there. And now on third and eight, coach calls four verticals play. I get open, but my trash-ass QB sells me which leads to the Bruins scoring, and now we're down 7-0. Still early in the first quarter, though, so there's a lot of time left to get good yards and break tackles and gain more yards. Look at that run from Stuart Hall get right there. Me. Jesus Christ, get off me. Get off him. He's a demon. This kid is something else. This kid is special. This kid is talented as he gets another 13 yards right there. And then now on second and six, he's getting another 10 plus yards right there and breaking tackles like the demon he is. And then on third and three, we cap off the drive with a tutty. Come on, man. Now on this next drive, it's looking like our defense can't stop a fly as the Bruins have scored again, which means that we're going to have to carry on offense and keep putting up points on the board because this could end a dogfight as I keep running and getting that first down. And then on third and 10 here, my QB hits me with a dot, but I dropped the ball. And now near the end of the third quarter, we have to get a score here or this game is basically over as on this kickoff, I return it for 30 yards. And then on first and 10, Stewart Hall gets a six yard rush to end the third quarter. Now third and three in the fourth, I run, try to get to the middle, try to get to the first foul marker, but I can't. So I decide to screw it, no huddle it, run the ball again, and we thankfully get past the yellow marker, keeping this game alive, season alive, and possibly our future alive. As on first and 10 here, our QB throws a heat seeker, but threw it to the wrong team as he threw an interception, which possibly kills our chances of coming back in this game right here, and potentially our season. Now on third and 10 on this next drive though, I catch the ball from the QB, getting a decent gain, and then on second and two right here, he's gonna find me open on the flat, and we almost got taken down right there, but thankfully, our days in the weight room paid off, and then on first and goal here, our QB's gonna get sacked, and then fumble the ball, and then look at them. I have to go in and make a slide tackle, bruh. But that concludes the game. We lost. Your boy had 
93 yards for 14 rushes, which is still pretty good, and five catches for 22 yards. Now we're facing off against the 88 overall Washington Huskies, and even though they have a good team, they're three and five, which means I believe we could have a fighting chance as I bring this ball back. It looks like we could take it all the way, but we get taken down, and we had a 56-yard return, and our offense did nothing with that. But now on this next drive, I just want y'all to look at how much of a W teammate Stewart Hall is as even though he doesn't get the ball in this option play, he makes sure he sets the blocks for his teammate and gets his QB that 36-yard touchdown. Just look at Stewart Hall, man. So inspirational. Now we're going to fast forward a little bit to the fourth quarter here. We're down 14-17. But as you can tell in this kickoff return, when you got Stewart Hall, you always got a chance, baby. As on first and 10 here, we're going to run for a nice little six-yard gain. And then on second and 11, we're going to follow it up on this pass play and catch a beautifully thrown ball from our QB and get past the yellow sticks and get a 14-yard reception. And then on third and 10, Cole Sanders calls the screen pass for me. And you know I'm going to catch that. And you know I'm going to keep running and get them yards. Leading to this first and 10 here, where I'm going to run my own route and run this nice little wheel route. Oh my gosh, look at that dot from our QB right there. And even though we couldn't get the game-winning touchdown, Thankfully, we had a timeout, and we kicked the field goal to send this one to overtime, ladies and gentlemen. Are you not entertained? But starting off here on our first play of OT, on a play-action pass, our QB throws a dot, and we just started off with a score, baby. But now we're out on the field again as Washington matched our score and scored another, leading us to having a score touchdown to stay in this game here. As on 4th and 10, I call for the ball, but my QB throws ahead of me, bro. And that's how we lose that one. A nail-biter, a fight to the end. You see the stats. Let's get to the next game as we're facing the California Golden Bears. They're coming to our house. Let's go in and put a beat down on these boys. As on the first play here, oh my gosh, I see a big open hole and we get a 13 yard rush off of that and then on second and six here i'm running to the outside and oh my gosh i only got one man to beat one man to beat he can't catch me we got through that and we score the big 55 yard touchdown run look at that Stuart hall the boy the man the myth the legend and we match it up there with the field goal extra point kick and now in the next possession third and ten pass play straight through the middle nice and open just how i like it as you picked up that 22 yard big gain right there and then on third and nine bro my qb bro this nigga is ass <sighs> there's only so much Stuart hall could do bro he's only a running back only a running back but now with less than a minute remaining in the first half we're down 17 to 7 that's 10 points for all you guys who don't know math we catch this huge play right here, but what do you know it? Of course, our one of our teammates gets a flag. And then on first and 10 here, another blunder by our terrible, and I mean terrible, QB, bruh. It should be a felony that Shadur Sanders is not starting for this team. But now, in the second half here, down 7-20. to 20. Yes, they scored another field goal before halftime. I don't know what we could do, man. I'm just trying my best, trying to keep, keep this team motivated, trying to lead this team to a victory, but everything else is just not working out. Regardless, though, your boy Stuart Hall is going to keep putting belt as he gets that nice 11-yard rush right there. And then on second and six, we're going to bounce it to the outside again and get pick up another first down. And then thankfully, I mean thankfully, our team finally scored a touchdown, but our defense couldn't hold up and stop. And now we got to lead our team to another touchdown to even have a chance at winning this game right here. As on first and 10, I caught this dot from our QB. And now we're in the fourth quarter here. Throw your fours up. Do you think we'll win this game? I know we won't, <laughs> but you never know, man. And now I'm third and five on a flat. I'm wide open. Thankfully, my QB hits me right there and gets us the first down. And on fourth and 10, they call a screen pass on fourth and 10. And your boy doesn't even get a chance to catch the ball, bro. I hate my QB. But with less than a minute remaining in the fourth quarter, this game is pretty much over. But you know J. Lou is going to keep eating regardless what the score says on the scoreboard. But that concludes the game. And man, oh man, we had a great personal game with 14 attempts for 125 yards, 82 yards receiving, but damn, we just keep getting our ass up. And the spankings look like it's not going to stop here as we're now facing the USC Trojans led by everyone's favorite QB, Caleb Williams. But the only thing going through Stuart Hall's mind is that his team needs this W today as if we lose this game, our season is basically over as we won't be able to go to a bowl game. And then questions will arise if Stuart Hall should transfer. But like I said, Stuart Hall is focused on his game. And as you can see, he ran the ball in for a touchdown. And he's looking to win this game. 
in our whole stadium and get a big statement win over the Trojans. Now starting off our next drive with a carry from Stewart. He cuts to the outside, cuts back to the inside, and gets a nice, big, little decent game right there. And then on first and 10, oh my gosh, look at the weaves as he gets a six-yard rush right there. Just bobbing and weaving. And then look at him continuing to do the same. And then on first and goal, our QB hits our receiver in the corner of the touchdown. And oh my gosh, this game is tied up. Nearing the end of the first half here. And then look, out right of the kickoff. Oh my gosh, that could have been big. We were faster and stronger. But regardless, though, on second and 10, I catch this nice little flat play right here and get a nice 10 yard gain. And then on second and 10, I cut through the middle, catching a beam from our QB right there. And then now, first and 10, straight through the middle, HB dive. Look at that. Oh my God. We get that nice 10 yard gain right there. And on third and 12, would you believe me if I told you we got this first down right here as I caught the ball? And no, we didn't get the first down. But I'm going to know how to do it and see if we can get it again and run the same cheesy play. And we do. And I catch the ball and get that first down. And look at me breaking that tackle and get out of bounds right there. With less than three minutes remaining in the game. We're down two scores. Anything is possible. Stuart Hall believes. Do you believe? On second two, we catch this ball on the outside. Run it up the sidelines. Getting out of bounds. Saving some time right there. And then on third and two. What should have been a touchdown, but we make it right up on the next play as we run it into the end zone, getting a nice touchdown, and now it's a one-score game, ladies and gentlemen. Anything is possible with less than 10 seconds left, and they're just going to run the clock out, aren't they? Oh, my God. Our season is over. We had 90 yards rushing, 85 yards receiving, and now we're playing our last game of the season against the Utah Utes. Did I say that right? I don't know. But we're starting off down three zip as, oh my gosh, why did I trip over that player? That could have been a great run right there. But now on first and 10, I'm cutting to the outside and we got shackled by our shoelaces. But then on third and five, I'm cutting towards the middle and our QB, yo, that's, even though our QB is trash, me and him, our connection on that play is beautiful. It's just beautiful. We just, he just hits me every time in the right spot. I hit him getting to that right little crevice right there. Don't get it twisted though. That nigga is still garbage. I don't know how he just got that 43-yard touchdown off. But regardless, on our next possession here, we're up 14-6. It's looking like this could possibly be a W right here. As their run defense is non-existent, and it's looking like Coach wants to feed me the rock, probably trying to convince me to stay another season. As we run in this one-yard touchdown right here, bringing the score up to 21-6, if we hopefully get the extra point field goal kick, which we do. Now it's 21-13, man. Nearing the end of the first half, less than 20 seconds left. Oh my God, am I gonna take this all the way? Oh my God, Stuart Hole taking it past the 30, the 20, the 10, touchdown. Oh my God, why Stuart Hole feeling like that? Why he running like that? Look at that man, go mama, let's go. Definitely looks like Stuart Hole wants to end the season off in a good way and possibly, you feel me, you never know, look good for other college coaches to possibly want him to the team, you feel me? Probably a little NIO money. You never know. And then on second and seven here, I fall to the ground and can't get up. No, no, I just got injured off blocking. Oh my gosh. I just got injured off blocking and I had to sit up for the rest of the quarter. But we're back in the fourth quarter now, starting off for that seven yard rush. And then on second and three, run it up for another five yards. And then on third and nine, oh yeah. Straight through the middle. Straight through the middle. Get through that. Get through that steward hole as he gets that first down. And then now on first and 10, they're all up on me, but we still got five off of that. And that looks like that will be the conclusion of the game and the season, fellas. Stewart Hall, putting belt to ass, getting player of the game. 198 yards off of 20 carries, bro. Plus with the receiving yards. And then this is how we ended off our season. 183 attempts for over 1,000 yards and 54 catches for almost 600 receiving yards. And we were second and last in the Pac-12. Jesus Christ. Even though we went 5-7, and seven, this was still a fun season. Stewart Hall went crazy. Hope y'all enjoyed it. The series is not over. It's going to continue. And we're definitely getting the fuck out of Colorado. After a very long and somewhat disappointing freshman season at Colorado, Stewart Hall is left with a very important decision to make. Should he stay at Colorado or is it time to pack his bags and hit that transfer portal? Oregon Ducks. Ole Miss Rebels. Texas Longhorns, Florida State Seminoles. These are Stuart Hall's top four teams, but he only has his eye on one, and that is the Longhorns. Horns up, baby. Come on, man. A team with Quinn Ewers, Steve Scarkeesian at head coach, and now Stuart Hall at running back. This team is set to dominate 
and has a chance to win it all. And these are the, what our stats are looking like coming into the season. And I hope you guys are ready for the ride. And if you are, please be sure to subscribe to the channel as we're looking to hit 10,000 subscribers before the new college football game drops. But starting off here against Coastal Carolina, we have a way stronger team. As you can see, Quinn Ewers hits our receiver for this one play touchdown. On the following drive, we get our first carry at Texas and it results in a one yard loss. Wow. Regardless though, we come back on a speed option play, get hit the ball, and get a nice five yard gain. And then on second and five here, we run straight through the middle, picking up the first on eight yard rush. And now we get a carry inside the five. And you know where Stuart Hall's favorite place is, the end zone. As we get our first touchdown at Texas. And our first game is off to a great start as we're up 14-7 and don't seem to be letting our foot off the gas pedal anytime soon. And then on second and one here, we get hit in the ball, and you know we're going to get past that marker, but we're not done yet as we get right back up and get more yards. How did I do that? I didn't even know this was possible. Oh, man, Stuart Hall. Getting more yards by any means possible as on second and seven here, we pick up another first down. And now our offense is looking poised to score again deep in the red zone here, deep near the end zone. I get the ball. Stuart Hall. Just magic, man. Just magic. This kid is hungry. And wants to win. And when there's a will, there's a way. Now on this next drive here, starting off at the 26, Stuart Hall goes up through the middle and gets a big gain right there. Then on the very next play, he picks up a first down marker and more, bringing his Longhorns past the 50. Then now he cuts it to the outside, picking up another 10 plus yards. Then Coach Sarkeesian calls a speed option play, and Quinn Ewers wasted a perfect moment to hand it off to Stuart Hall. And look at him, just looking at open, green, Beautiful grass, man. It's like every time he gets the ball, it's just an automatic first down. This kid's a magnet. But don't forget, he can also catch it out of the backfield and gain those receiving yards. But don't ask me how, because I don't know. But our defense just had arguably the worst game ever as we just lost to a 77 overall team, man. 28 to 21. But your boy Stuart Hall went crazy. 18 rushes for 109 yards and three catches for 27. If he won the game, he definitely would have been playing in the game. But now let's see if we can bounce back against the Cougars as they're 1-0 and we're playing them at their house. Starting off here on second and inches, their D-line is just mauling my offensive line and there's nothing Stuart Hall can do. Like, look at this. Why are my old linemen not blocking? Oh my gosh. My old line can't do anything, so I have to catch passes out of the backfield to get yards and get that first down right there. And on 37, I catch another dot, gaining another first down. <laughs> But then I fumble, no way. As soon as we were catching momentum, we fold in and ended the drive. But thankfully they didn't score, and now we're back on offense. Stuart Hall breaking into the outside. Oh, if I broke that tackle, we could have did something major, but we still got that first down there. And then on second two, I catch a pass straight through the middle and cut up field and gain a 23 yard reception. And the drive gets capped off with Quinn Ewers throwing this 41 yard dot to Mitchell which ends off that half, and now we're in the second half, starting with the ball here. We almost narrowly picked up that first down, but I said screw it and called for no huddle and got the ball back and then cut it to the outside, gained the first down and more as we're running upfield, but we get pushed out of bounds. And then now in second and 10, we get the ball handed back to us and look at their defense and look at my offensive line. Non-existent, come on! But on first and 10 here, I'm going to cut to the outside because there's no one guarding me. They're clearly in the zone. We pick up that first down. And then now first and goal, we run into the end zone and pick up another tutty. Let's go. After a somewhat worrisome start, it seems like we finally picked it up, even though we couldn't get this two-point conversion here. But regardless, we're still up by five with less than a minute 30 remaining in the game. Surely there's no way we lose this, right? Hopefully I didn't speak too soon. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh no, holy, no way. We lost to two unranked teams to start the season back to back who our teams were way better than, man. Unthinkable, bro. But now we're playing our first ranked opponent of the season in the Ole Miss Rebels, a team that I was interested in transferring to before the season started, but decided to come to the Longhorns instead. And maybe I made the wrong decision. Only time will tell as Stuart Hall gets this ball and cuts it to the inside and then cuts it to the outside and all I've seen is open grass, no defenders downfield. Someone's trying to catch up to me, but you can't because Stuart Hall is Mr. Get Through That. Oh my gosh, would you look at that run? Our first big run of the season. Maybe this is what we need to turn the tide of the season, turn the tide of this team and get back on track. But let me not speak too soon as we're still down. 
but there's a lot of game left as we're in the fourth quarter here and then I run into the end zone, tying up the game. In front of our 100,000, 119 fans watching in the stands, watching us go crazy and watching us trying to win this game. And now we're down again with the minute 20 left in the game. I'm running on second and two and I drop what would have been the first down pass. But thankfully, my teammates clutched up and got us the game time score. And now with the chance to win with less than 20 seconds left, Quinn Ewers throws a dot, a dot to our outside receiver down the field. And now with triple zeros on the clock, can Jackson Dark get a last second Hail Mary? And he does it. And he does it as we pick that ball off and end the game. Your boy Stuart Hall, 97 yards, 32 yards catching, two TDs. That boy went crazy. And now we're facing against another ranked opponent, number nine, Kansas State Wildcats. And you know Stuart Hall's never hungry because I'm always getting fed the ball as I get 11 yards right there. And then on this counter play, I get the ball and turn on the burners and show off that wonderful speed as I get open field grass. Can I take it? This nigga really tackled me, bro. No way he got to me, bro. That just got me tight. I picked up all them yards to get the touchdown stolen. But thankfully, we still scored, though. That's all that matters. Stewart holds the team player at the end of the day. As on this next drive here, Stewart stiff arms the defender and picks up 10 new yards because of it. Oh, my gosh. I didn't even know that was his body for real. And then on his speed option play, it's like the defenders don't even know Stewart has the ball as he gets a big gain of yards right there. And then on first and 10, they run another option play. And look at Stewart just gaining more yardage with that beautiful gain right there. And just to have C.J. Baxter end off our drive with a measly-ass five-yard touchdown run. Why is my backup in for me? Like, let me eat as I pick up another 15 on this following drive and I pick up another nine. I'm just gaining yards. Stewart's really picking up 10 plus each play and dominating still. It's like he doesn't get tired. It's like he has 99 stamina. This kid is the perfect bell cow running back. Always there when you need him and will always pick up that first down. It's so refreshing how we left Colorado and came to Texas and he was able to showcase 100% of his skill set and his abilities as he gets the ball in his plate and just winds that into the end zone, man. Stuart Hall, the demon. This Kansas State team is not looking like a top 10 team to me, man. I haven't seen them make any adjustments or any stops to Stuart Hall as we're in the third quarter and he is still running all over them. Jesus Christ, look at this. Just straight belt, bruh. Five plus yards guarantee each play here, and he can still catch the rock as I got hit stick right there, but still head on to the ball and then finish the drive with another touchdown. Stuart Hall, bro, just sensational. Look, he's making a top 10 team look like bums, bro. This is crazy. But now it's time for the best formation of football, victory formation, and that's how we finish the game off, fellas. Stuart Hall with 212 yards rushing. There's just nothing more to be said. As we're now facing the Iowa State Cyclones, they're currently undefeated. So let's see if we can put an end to that in this game as we're in their field. And it looks like they're already trying to play dirty. But that won't keep us from scoring as we get this touchdown right here. And we're already off to a beautiful start, man. It's, it feels like the game just started. We kicked the extra point after. And now with less than two minutes remaining in the first half, let's see if we can pick up a quick score right here to cut in further into that Iowa State lead. We catch a dot here near the sideline. And then pick up a few more yards here on this carry. Setting our team up for at least a good field goal try. But due to poor clock management by our QB and coach, we end up leaving the half with nothing. Risk it all for the biscuit. Couldn't even get a piece. But now we're in the second half here. We got the ball. Stuart Hall still dominating. Look at this. Just look at this. Another touchdown, man. My son just getting jiggy on him, moving left, right, left, right. Come on, man. He's not doing a squabble. He's just getting jiggy and helping his team come back to try to get this dub. And we're looking pretty set now in the fourth quarter with the seven-point lead and with the bowl and with Stuart Hall still getting five-plus yards each carry. Just look, look at him, man. Just beasting and feasting each play he gets and then catching balls too. Pause. He's just doing it all. And then on 38 here, he catches another one, but the Cyclones were ready for it this time and finally got a stop on Stuart Hall. But Coach kept the drive alive by going for on fourth down, which means more Stuart Hall carries. As Quinn Ewers just did one of the most stupidest things ever as he threw the ball off the defender, but the ball was still live and we lost the ball and they scored, which makes the game tied 
with less than 50 seconds left in the game, we now have to go and lead a game-winning drive as Stewart Hall catches the ball there, getting a first down, putting us in field goal position with 10 seconds left. Can I pick up this first down? I can't. And now we're forced to kick a field goal to win the game, and we do. Yes, sir. We're still alive, baby. Player of the game, Stuart Hall. You already know your boy. And now it's time for the Red River rivalry as we're going against the number six team in the country, Oklahoma Sooners. When Stuart Hall chose to join the Longhorns and Joan Court Sarkeesian and Quinn Ewers, he knew games like these were the ones where he would have to come big and go crazy. And he is poised to do that as on this next drive, we have the ball already up 7-6. Stuart Hall catches it and picks up a 7-yard gain. And then on 3rd and 3, Stuart Hall cuts it to the outside and gets upfield and picks up a nice 13-yard gain right there. And on 1st and 10, we catch another dart from Quinn Ewers. And with the seconds ticking down in the first half here, we get another run play from Ewers. And I'm trying to cut it to the outside. But there isn't enough space, which brings us to the second half here. And we have the ball starting off. And oh my gosh, Stuart Hall breaking tackles off like those? And on 3rd and 1, I'm on the outside looking like I'm on vacation with no defenders nearby as we pick up that first down. And then on 2nd and 13, look at Stuart Hall breaking tackles all for a little 5-yard gain. And then on 1st and 10, this nigga just threw it at my back and gave the ball up. Quinn Ewers. That's, that's strike number 2, Ewers. I'm not going to lie. Strike number 2. Third strike, I'm transferring. I'm going. You're going to have to catch. This nigga threw a pick. That's third. That's 3 strikes. 3 strikes, I'm out, my nigga. No way on the most important game of the season, Quinn Ewers decided to just shit the bed. No way. No way we lose a game like this, man. As we're now down 7-14 to 14, with less than 2 minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the game here. We have to pull off in a miracle to come back here and try to win this one. As I cut it to the outside, trying to get in. But then on second and goal, we finally get in the end zone, which hopefully ties up this game and gets us back on track. Shout out my kicker. I haven't seen him miss yet, man. And now the Sooners, led by Dylan Gabriel, have a chance to win it all with less than 10 seconds remaining. And he throws the interception, man, on the OT, man. We lost the toss, which means that we're starting on offense here. And then I get the ball, cut it to the outside, put it on the speed, and kicking this one off with a tutty, man. Let's go. Stuart Hall showing out in the biggest of stages here as he dominates and continues to excel. But the Sooners match our score and then proceed to score again, which means that we're back on offense here and we have to score to keep this game alive. And Stuart Hall is doing his best and his all to try and get that first down and gain as many yards as he can as he gets the ball again but brings it to a 30 inches, and you know I'm going to have to know how to do that and prove myself as I get the ball and narrowly, and I mean just very narrowly get that first down right there, and then C.J. Baxter finishes it up, getting that touchdown, and now we're kicking it off again on offense, and what was that play? That was a terrible screen play and call. What is coach doing as I get the ball here and just almost barely got that first down, which forced us to kick the field goal on fourth and inches, even though we probably could have given it to me. Went for it on fourth down. Come on, man. You know I would have got that. But they got a field goal, too, which means with a touchdown now, we will win this game, ladies and gentlemen. Are you locked? Are you ready? As I get the ball and take it all the way to the hole for the touchdown. Game over. Hasta la vista. Bye-bye to them niggas. We win it all. Longhorns up, baby. Never down. As you get the player of the game, 150 yards. Your boy went off. Stewart Hall, and with that dominant win over Sooners, we're now ninth in the country, second in our conference. Your boy Stewart Hall, he's also in a Heisman watch, third place. Are y'all not entertained? I told y'all, he is the greatest walk-on running back ever. Y'all better stay tuned, cause his journey's not over yet, man. After our roller coaster of a start to our sophomore season, losing our first two games and winning four straight, we now seek to end off our season on a high note. Can we make it to the 12 team playoff and solidify Stuart Hall as the greatest walk on of all time by winning it all? Stay tuned. This has been a long and very stressful and up and down career for Stuart Hall so far, but hopefully we can finish this video with him winning something. I would prefer for it to be a championship, but if we win a bowl game, I can't be mad at that too. But if you're new to the channel, please be sure to drop a subscription for your boy as I'm hoping to hit 10,000 subscribers before the new college football game drops in July. So if you want to help me get to that goal, just sub up, like the video, comment, all that. Appreciate it. But back to our seventh game of the season. We're going against TCU, and they're below 500. And what do you guess? We're down to these guys. Come on. And look at Quentin Ewers, bro. Just getting treached in the pocket and throwing interceptions, man. Hopefully, oh my gosh, it's going to be a pick six, isn't it? A pick six to end off the half is crazy. 
But now we're in the second half here. We have the ball. Let's see if Stuart Hall can cook something up. As you can tell by the scoreboard that our team was definitely not prepared to play this game and face off against these frogs. But anything is possible, so you can't count out the comeback. And let's see if we can do something here as we're finally putting a good drive together and it looks like we should be able to, to get a touchdown out of this drive before the quarter ends. And we ended up game one. And now with less than two minutes remaining in the game, we have to make some shake here as I cash this ball and get it past the first down marker. And then on the very next play, I get it past the first down marker again. I'm just no huddling cheesing with this play as defense can't guard me one-on-one -on -one with that linebacker. You're gonna have to put someone else on me. And we end up getting a touchdown on that drive, but sadly we couldn't score again. And we end the game off with 11 rushes, 45 yards, five catches for 45 receiving yards. And now we're facing against the Jayhawks. Oh my gosh, losing the booty teams. Why do we win against the good ones, but lose against the bad ones, bro? It doesn't make sense to me, bro. Our team is, we have demons on our team. Our receiving core is max. Our D-line is max. Our QB is one of the best in the nation. What is wrong with our team? <sighs> There's something we don't know about. But now, starting off here against the Jayhawks, we pull out to our early lead. And it looks like Stuart Howell is going to have a great day in this game. As we pull off a couple of 10 plus yard carries right here. And now, on second and inches, you know we're going to get that first down, plus more, as we get another 10-plus yard carry right there. And now on third and two, can we get this first down? And you know we're going to get it, plus more. As we got four yards right there, and our team capped it off with a touchdown, finishing that drive. And now on this next one right here, we get a nice little dot from Ewers, leading to an 18-yard reception. And on our first and 10, I squeeze through the O-line right there and catch this ball. Seeing if we can help our team get a quick score right here before the end of the half as we catch another 16-yard dot from Ewers right there. But for some reason, coach doesn't call a timeout unless Ewers runs off the clock on a play and Cuz just threw it up, double team to our receiver, bro. This team, man, I, I see why we have the record we have, bro. It just makes all sense. The coach and QB, man, just very, let's just say special individuals for sure. But now during the end of the third quarter right here, I catch this ball, getting our team the first down, and just trying everything in my power to make sure our team doesn't screw up this game and lose this game in front of our home crowd. But I make a very risky decision to know how to win on fourth and goal here, and I try to take it to the end zone, but I just couldn't wheel my way in, and it's a turnover on downs, man. But now we're in the fourth quarter here. We're up 28-7. Thankfully, my team, offense, and defense, and special teams came through and made sure we didn't lose this one as we score a touchdown right here. Our first touchdown of the game, surprisingly. But this game just further proves my theory, bro. We win against the good teams, but lose against the bad teams as we beat 5-2 and two Kansas right here. And your boy went crazy with 23 rushes for 120-plus yards and 5 catches for 60-plus receiving yards. And now we're set to face off against the Mountaineers. They're a 5-4 team, so I don't know if this falls into the good or bad team category. Let's just say they're mediocre, and let's just hope we can get this win right here. As Stuart Hall starts getting jiggy on this HB draw play, and it looks like we're going to take it all the way for the touchdown run. Now, that is a Stuart Hall I'm used to seeing, the dominant, gritty, unstoppable, open field seeker. And I know for a fact, Stuart Hall doesn't plan on keeping his foot off the gas pedal. As on this next drive here, we start off with a nice little six yard game right here. Sadly, nothing came out of that drive. And now on the second quarter here, we kick things off on this first and 10 with a seven yard carry. And then on third and one, you know we're gonna get the first and more as we get a five yard game right there. And then on third and six, out of the backfield, Ewers spots me and hits me with a beautiful dot. And then I continue to show off my pass catching skills as I come out the backfield again. And Ewers, oh my God, that was a tight ball right there as we pick up 12 yards, and then on second and 12, I tried to get jiggy, I tried to cut it to the outside, but they stopped me right there. But on this option play, we catch it and head and just walk into the end zone. I'm just happy my team came to play today, like for sure. Like This is not one of those games where my defense just crumbles and folds, and this is not one of those games where my own line is looking like Swiss cheese and can't block a soul. But it looks like this one's coming to an end, coming to a close. But why not see if we can get one last score with Stuart Hall's legs and see if we can pull out something crazy right here before the game ends as he keeps picking up five plus yards each carry. And I know he's just waiting on the defense to give up one play so he can pull off something spectacular. But the defense was my let themselves get embarrassed again as that's how we end the game off. And who else other than Stuart Hall to be player of the game as he rushed for 107 yards, caught 56 yards receiving, and had a nice little tutty. And now we're facing off against the Cowboys. No, not those Cowboys. Oklahoma State Cowboys. This is a below 500 team at 4-5. and five, But like I said, and as y'all been watching throughout this whole season, 
We play good against good teams and bad against bad teams. As we're currently tied up here in the second quarter, but you know Stuart Hall's gonna get to that and pick up another touchdown to put us in the lead. Stuart Hall is going to try to break this curse, break whoever put this on us. And as I'm saying this, Quinn Ewers does this bullshit. Look at this. Oh my God. Cuz just threw the ball in the option play, knowing I wasn't there, and just fumbled the ball for no reason and gave it to the other team. But thank God that play didn't have a crazy impact on the game as we're up 27 to 14 and look to increase that lead. As we're in the end zone, nearing the end of the third quarter, and then on third and goal, Stuart Hall gets the ball. And look at how wide that hole was. Online came to show up for this game, for sure. And we get that extra point, but then you can't make this up when it comes to this team, man. I think it's just who we are, bro. No way! We should not be in a situation where we're fighting to win the game. And then this fuck nigga throws a pick. Oh my god! The curse this team has is just special. Like, spe like not special like in a good way. Just special just how strong the curse is, bro. Like, it just works. And Like, the theory just works every time. We play good against ranked teams. Good teams with over 500 records and stuff. But teams that are just ass, that have below 500 records, just should not be comparable to us. We play terrible against. But you know your Stuart Hole went off, went crazy. And now we're facing off against a Red Raiders team. And I bet you we somehow come out with this win. I bet you. I lo look at the record. They're over 500. I bet you we're going to get this win easily. I bet you Stuart Hole's going to go crazy. Quinn Ewer is going to go crazy. The receiver's going to go crazy. And the defense is going to put them on locks. Watch. It's just, it's just the curse, bro. It's just crazy. Look at this. Stuart Hole's bouncing all the time. Who does this nigga think he is? Uh, the curse, bro. I'm telling you, bro. I just want to know how this got placed on the team, bro. Like, come on, bro. Is this something that EA got in their, their code, their coding or something? Is it something we don't know about? Is this something that should be informed of? As Stuart Hall catches his dot from you, which for 15 yards. And then on first and 10 here, some way, somehow, the defense that left me wide open when no one guarded me. And you know Stuart Hall's going to take advantage of that, getting the pass to one defender, and see if we can open field grab to get to the bah. Come on, man. 71-yard touchdown reception. Stuart Hall's on deep in time. We're now up 21-7 on the Red Raiders. Let's see if we can get another quick score before half with less than 40 seconds remaining. I catch this dog from yours, getting past the first down marker and more. And now with less than 20 seconds left, I catch another pass from yours, cut into the middle. But with little clock remaining and no timeouts, we couldn't take advantage. And the Red Raiders start the second half off with a touchdown, which means now it's our ball and we're only up seven now and we cannot afford to lose this game as we could possibly risk any chance we have left of getting in a 12-team playoff and possibly losing star players in the offseason. Star players, including Stuart Hall. Yes, if this team plays terrible and loses more games, I'm getting the fuck up out of here. You heard it here first. But our team seems to be hitting on all cylinders as Quinn Ewers passes me that dot here, which led to a touchdown. Now, in what should be our final drive of the game, we're looking to end this one off, run the clock out, and it should be another dub for the Longhorns. And with Stuart Hall running back, there's always the possibility of a last second touchdown as I get to the outside and put up field. Oh my gosh. And then on 35, oh, oh my gosh. We pick up that last second touchdown. If we don't get into that 12 team playoff, man, I am going to be so disappointed that the Longhorns wasted a year of this man's greatness. Jesus. 14 carries for 156 yards, six catches for 141 receiving yards. Y'all not understand how crazy that is? Like, just think about that. Fathom that. And don't forget, I'm playing on the Heisman, too. I'm not doing that rookie, that freshman. No, Heisman, nigga. And now in our last regular season game of our sophomore year, we're playing against the Baylor Bears, who is a 2-9 and nine team. Oh, my gosh. Probably our worst team we face this year, the Bailey. And the only reason I sound scared is because of that curse, man. It's just haunting me, bro. But on 37 here, you catch this dot and pick up the first score of the game. First tutty of the game, Stuart Hall, your boy, is trying to make sure we break that curse and get this W. I'm not going to lie. Even though we're up and this run defense looks to be weak, I'm still nervous. Uh, maybe I'm overreacting as Stuart Hall breaks free and picks up another tutty, man. Oh, my gosh. This could be a career game for Stuart Hall. Maybe I was just overreacting, bugging out as my son is looking like he is going to be on demon timing this whole game. As on second and six, I'm seeing open holes. And I cut to the outside and pick up a 22-yard game. And then on second three, another outside play. We pick up the first down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This could be the one. This could be the one. This could be a career game for Stuart Hall. Maybe this is the one where he has the most. <laughs> this nigga fumbled. G sauce. I told y'all, bro, that curse is just latching onto us like Venom onto Spider-Man, bro. It just, it just latches on you, and it's not coming off. Just when it seemed like the game was over already, something crazy happens to keep him in the mix. 
But thankfully, they didn't get a touchdown off of that. And now fast forward to the fourth quarter. We're up 31-17 with the ball in our hands. And Stuart Hall is trying to make sure he leaves McLean Stadium with a W today. As on third and three, he picks up the first down and more on a nine-yard run. And then we hop into victory formation. GG's, fellas. 20 carries for 205 yards rushing. That is insane. And we didn't even go crazy in receiving yards. But we went stupid in rushing. But, and we ended all second in the Big 12. 8-4. and four. I don't know how we didn't play in the Big 12 championship game. Oh, I don't know if the game bugged out or something, but there's something we don't know about. But just look at my stats, man. Your boy went crazy rushing and receiving. Stuart Hall is so special. And he came second for the Walker Award, fourth for the Walter Camp Award, and fourth for Heisman voting, bro. Imagine having a special player like that on your team, and your team can't find their way to the 12-team playoff or even a conference championship game. And now we're facing the guests off the Spartans in a Cotton Bowl game, bro. This is going to be easy. Oh, my gosh. Stuart Hall. It's going crazy on the first play, man. Like, I, I'm, not, I'm not even excited. Like, this is, this, this is what we should be doing. This is what is expected of us at this stage. We should have been in the 12-team playoff right now, man. And even though the curse should be broken, this is a good team we're facing against. They're 19 ranked, 9 and 3. These guys are no scrubs, man. But Stuart Hall still putting belt to ass on them as he's just rushing all over him. Probably has over 140 yards rushing. A tutty, and it's not even the end of the first quarter yet. Now on this next drive, second and 12 here, Stuart Hall. And just look at how beautiful these blocks are. I could have probably ran in there for a touchdown if I didn't run into my blocker right there. And then on first and goal, that's just straight Baja, man. Too easy. No one on me. And I think a defender touched me after I passed the pile on sticks. Like, it's too late for that, buddy. Should have got me before. How do we tell you? And now in the fourth quarter here, this game is pretty much over as we're up 38 to 20. And our team came to play in the full game. I just wish we could have done this every game of the season, every loss of the season. Stuart Hall had another career-setting game with 236 yards rushing, two touchdowns, and that marks the end of the season for us, man. 9-4. 17th rank. Like I said, this was a roller coaster season. I'm gonna have to make some decisions. Should we transfer again and try to win it with someone else or stay and build and try to win it with the guys? Let me know down in the comments. It's your boy Cam Lee. Safety. Stuart Hall is now in his junior year and he's looking for a breakthrough. Although his play has been exceptional, the rest of the team can't seem to keep up to his standards. And what could be his last year before he enters the draft? Will he stay to continue building at Texas or look for a change? Where will Mr. Hall go? I think he's staying at Texas. This was definitely the smartest choice for Stewart as most of the team is coming back better and wiser. And you can tell by the preseason polls right here as we're ranked pretty highly and the Big 12 ranked overall and Stewart Hall is already part of the Heisman watch list all on top. These are his stats here and he's a 99 overall, 99 speed, 99 acceleration. There's a reason he's on top of that Heisman watch list. Be prepared for a demon to be unleashed this season. As we start off our first game at home in the Darrell K. Royal Stadium against North Texas here. And look at Stuart Hall already finding his way into the end zone, bro. I'm telling you, this season is his year. He's going to take this team to the 12-team playoff and hopefully to the national championship. The journey of Stuart Hall has been a beautiful one to watch. From starting off, leaving high school as a walk-on, walking on to Colorado, then transferring to Texas. And oh my gosh, look at what he is doing in his junior year. 51-yard rush there, and then our next play running Get counter off play. Me. Oh my gosh, he just bitched the shot of him, and now he's in the end zone. Nah, why cuz push him off him like that? Jesus, I don't even know if that even counts as a stiff arm for real. Stewart didn't even put his arm out. That's straight weight room, baby. Straight muscle. And now in our next possession here, we start off on 30 and 3, getting that first down for our team and keeping the chains moving. And then on second and 14 here, I catch a dot from Ewers and gets us a third and eight. And then on that third and eight, Ewers spots me again and hits me wide open in the seam for a first and goal inside the red zone. And then he feeds me and gets me that touchdown. And now we're up 20 to zero. Oh my gosh, this is a great start to the year. Great start to the team. It's nice to see the guys putting in work early. And with less than two minutes remaining in the first half, let's see if we can get another quick score here as yours hits me again and I hurry my ass to the sidelines. And then on second and three here, I cut through the middle, catch that pass, and just choke the shit out of that fender. Oh my gosh, look at, I just boomed off him, come on. And look at this insanely difficult pass I just caught right there. I'm a running back, but I can still hit you with that tiptoe sideline drag, come on, man. And then we capped off that drive with a nice little touchdown to Worthy right there. 
Now in the second half here, we're up 28 to 7, but let's see if we can pad the stats a little bit more. As on second and three, Stuart Hall gets the ball and cuts to the outside, but that fat ass lineman caught up to me and saved what would have been a potential touchdown right there. But someone else on our team got that touchdown to cap off that drive, and then North Texas came back and scored again. So now we have the ball, and let's see what Stuart Hall can keep doing, which we'll is keep dominating as on he gets another 10 plus yard rush right there. And then coach subbed me out because I was given too much belt. And that's how the game ended, man. 158 yards, 17 carries, three tutties, and 55 receiving yards. Your boy was put in belt. And now we're facing the Bruins, who I know y'all remember the way they destroyed us in our freshman year at Colorado. But now we're on a better team, way better team. So let's see what we can do as we start off with a seven-yard rush here. And then on the next first and 10, Stuart Hall cuts to the outside and tried to get a little jiggy. But we got a 15-yard rush right there. And then on first and 10, I just walked my way into the end zone, breaking through tackles. Oh my gosh, Stuart Hall, the man, the myth, the legend. Let's go. Starting off 7-0 here. That is big as this UCLA team is really good, even though they're 1-1. One one, but we could not get too cocky as that leaves a chance for us to get humbled. But as I cut through the middle here, I get hit stick crazy by a defender right there. But we just ran up the middle for a touchdown the very next play, man. Stuart Hall. So inspirational, man. Just so inspirational. I'm telling y'all, man, I see a Heisman in his future, bro. From walk-on to Heisman. Hold on. That could be a very interesting title idea. I'm going to keep that in a tuck. But now, on this next possession here, 37. You know I'm catching balls all day. Pause. And then on this very next counter play, I cut to the outside. Get jiggy. Use that 99 speed, 99 acceleration to our advantage. But we couldn't get the first down there. But we do on this next play. Catching that ball there for a 15-yard reception. And you can tell Hall is looking for a house call as he gets to the outside on this play. But gets pushed out by the safety right there. But then he gets the touchdown on the very next play. Mr. House Call, your boy, Stuart Hall. This UCLA team is not giving the fight that I thought they would as we're currently up 24-10 to 10 in the fourth quarter and we pretty much took the dub as I get another 15-yard rush right there and then oh, we run an HB angle and I catch the ball. Oh my God, look at that spin move. How did I stay up? Oh, nah, these defenders are weak, buddy. Come on, man. Why couldn't this team be this week my freshman year, man? Like, why was they all nice for my freshman year and then now they want to be booty? I don't get it as we run to the outside and then get the tutty. 31-yard touchdown run. Yeah, these Bruins, they're not it, man. Definitely not it. But that pretty much concludes the game. Stuart Hall, I'm pretty sure he's going to get another play of the game. Yep, 165-yard rushing, four tutties, 96 receiving yards. And now let's see what we could do against the Jayhawks. And we're currently the number nine team in the nation, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. I'm not going to lie. This Jayhawk stadium is beautiful. Like, what is it called? The David Booth Memorial Stadium? Yo, this is beautiful. I'm not going to lie. Even though it's not that big, I'm loving the atmosphere right here. And Stuart Hall is loving it too as he starts off with a nice five-yard rush right there. And then on first and ten, he's breaking through tackles for another five-yard rush. And then on fourth and one, Quinn Ewers runs the options and gets into the end zone himself. The Jayhawks couldn't match our score, and now we're back on offense here. We're starting off with a nine-yard rush from Mr. Hall himself. And then on first and ten... He picks up a calm little 10 yards right there. And then on second and inches, he bullies his way through for that first down. Y'all better move them chains, buddy. I'm not going to lie. It seems like Coach Sarkeesian heard my worries, heard my issues throughout the summer. As it looks like I'm a bigger part of the offensive game plan as I'm getting more carries and more looks in the pass and the receiving game. Although this is a good change, as I get this touchdown here, let's go. If he had done this earlier, we probably would have had a national championship trophy right now. But regardless, we're now in the second half against the Jayhawks here. The score is 14-7. to We have to keep going on offense, keep the momentum rolling, and get a score here so we can make sure the Jayhawks don't even think about coming back. As on this option play, I get the ball and run up for the first down. And then on this next first and 10, we get the ball. And oh my gosh, look at me stumbling, but still picking up more yards. Stuart Hall is not falling. I'm telling you, this is a new and improved version. He's not 99 overall for Christ, God damn it. Let's go. Look at him. Oh, my God. Look at how many niggas he's running through. He's like a white girl to a football team. Come on, man. A train. Or should I say freight train to be more specific? But look at him just fighting and nailing his way to get as many yards as he can pick up for the team, for the squad, as he picks up another six right there. And then on 35, he picks up the chain. Almost got to the end zone, but he's going to get it here on first and goal. Put six more on the scoreboard for that man, mama. Let's go. And that's how we finish off the game here. As Stuart Hall gets another player of the game with 195 yards, two touchdowns, while only running 27 times. And now we're facing off against the West Virginia Mountaineers in our home stadium. 
Hopefully, this isn't a loss, but you never know in college football because any given week, you could take a W or you could take an L. As we start off slow on this drive, but Stuart Hall, some way, somehow, always finds his way into that end zone. Yo, now that I'm thinking about it, what the hell is a Mountaineer? If y'all know, let me know down in the comments. For real, like, I dead don't know what a Mountaineer is. Real talk, like, I was just thinking about it. What the hell is a Mountaineer? For real, just l let me know down in the comments, y'all, for real. And if you're a Mountaineer fan, I mean, no disrespect, for real. Like, I dead don't know. I'm guessing it's sometime about Mountain Explorer, something like that. But if you made it this far in the video and are new to the channel, Please subscribe to the channel as I'm trying to hit 10,000 subscribers for the new college football game drops as we get this touchdown with Stuart Hall. And I would gladly appreciate if you hit that sub button and also that like button if you're old or new. And even though we started with an early lead in the first half, we're now in the second half and we're only up by three. And that worries me a little bit. But what doesn't worry me is Stuart Hall getting 15 plus yard rushes right there. And then on third and six, I catch this dot from yours getting us the first down and moving the sticks up. And now on second and three, I'm trying to cut it to the outside. Can I get it with the 99 speed? And I just barely get that first down right there. And then on third and 10, I drop what would have been a beautiful pass from yours right there. And that concludes our drive. Now we're in the fourth quarter here. We're currently down 17 to 21 to the Mountaineers. And oh my gosh, don't tell me our worst fear is about to come true. Don't tell me we're about to lose to an unranked team. Come on, man. And then look at this Shaq in a full moment. I dropped two back-to-back -back passes in a row. My player didn't even put his hands up to try to catch it. Come on, to, come on, EA. I'm pressing triangle. What's going on? And now we're down 28 to 17 with a minute and some change remaining. And it's not looking good for us, fellas. But Stuart Hall is trying his hardest to keep this team in this game and keep them in the game as he gets this two-point conversion here on this run. And now we're down three points. But I think it's too late, fellas, as this game looks to be over. Losing 28-5 to 28 is sad. And we only got 58 yards rushing with 56 yards receiving. We have to do better if you want this team to go far into the playoffs and win that championship. But listen to this crowd. I don't know if y'all can tell, but they are loud. And Stuart Hall knows it's going to be a tough one against the Sooners as this rivalry runs deep. But Stuart Hall starts the ball when look at him getting jiggy, cutting left to right and cutting to the outside and getting this deep run. And oh my gosh, he should have gotten the Enzo. But I'm not mad at it as he starts the game off with a bang. Let's go, Stuart. And we eventually get a touchdown off of that. And now we're back on offense near our own end zone. And this is scary. And I feel like Quewers might mess it up. And he does as this nigga gets sacked and gets a safety. Come on, Quinn. Don't tell me you're going to fold when we needed you the most. As he fumbles the ball on our next drive. And they score a touchdown off of it. Quinn, what are you doing? You see the niggas on the floor. And you're going to throw it back for the option? Oh, but yo, this nigga might be retarded. He might be restarted. Oh my gosh, bro. He's folding and he throws an interception on third and 15, Quinn. Third and fifth. Yo, that's three back to back turnovers because of our QB. Nah, bro. At this point, put in arch, bro. Let's see what he got in the tank, baby. Because Quinn is looking scary in our biggest game of the year so far as he gets his pass to me and I catch it and get it to the sidelines. Come on, Quinn. If you can't be good in this game, how can we expect to get to the playoff and make a deep playoff run and try to get that national championship? But now we're in the fourth quarter here, down 21 to 29. This game has been a roller coaster, and this score looks crazy, even though it shouldn't be because of the disgusting turnovers committed by our QB. But I catch another pass here and try to spin move, break that tackle. But luckily for Oklahoma, they had other defenders there. But on this option play, I get the ball. Look at that beautiful spin move. Getting that 10-yard rush right there. And on second inches, you know I'm going to bully my way through for that first down. And it looks like your boy got injured right there as coach took me out for the rest of the game. I don't know why. But thankfully, I don't know how. We won 36-29, to man. A seven-point game is crazy, especially with how it was looking in the first quarter, how Quinn Ewers was just playing, man. I don't know how we came back. I don't know how we won that game. But I was in the game, so I really can't tell you how we came back. But now we're playing against TCU here. They're one in five. I wouldn't say this game is already in the bag, but it's in the bag. Come on, man. A one in five team. If we lose to the Horn Frogs, bro, I might as well just delete my YouTube channel or something, bro, because <laughs> no way. But look at Stuart Hall already starting off strong with this beautiful touchdown run right here. And his body's looking nice and fresh and healthy after that injury from our last game. And looking ready to keep dominating as on this next drive here. We start off with a nice little 15-yard run right there. And then Sanders caps off the drive with a touchdown. 
Wait, hold on. I just peeped. That Oklahoma W brought us into top five in the nation, bro. That's tough, especially after the tough losses we had earlier in the season to the Mountaineers. Us being top five puts us in a great position and great chance of making that 12-team playoff. And we could potentially end off with a first round bye if we keep climbing up the ranks. As on first and 10 here, Stuart Hall gets smacked. God damn. I don't know how that boy didn't get injured off that hit. Jesus. We got hit. We got injured in the last game against the Sooners off some weak ass hit. And then look at this, bro. I just got smacked and I'm still up and running. I don't know if that's toughness, weakness. I don't know, man. The only attributes I know Stuart Hall has is W's. Come on, man. That was corny as hell, wasn't it? But on second and three here, we're going to get the ball, cut it to the outside, and stumble and pirouette our way to that first down, baby. Then we end up picking another 10-plus yard run on the very next play. And now, second and goal, Quinn Ewers runs that ball in, and that caps off the game. Stewart had a calm 110 yards rushing 15 carry and two catches for 45 yards. Y'all boys, stay tuned to see how the season ends. From yours truly, King Henley, Macacho, safety. After our dominant start to the season, we now have a chance to pull off something special. All we have to do is stay consistent and finish strong. Can Stuart Hall complete and finish the mission and get a Heisman and possibly win it all? Let's find out. My boy Stuart Hall on a top five team in the nation, man. I used to pray for times like this. We're really right where we want to be in a sweet spot. And here is currently what our season is looking like for the college football playoff and the Big 12 Conference. But if you guys haven't already, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel as we're trying to hit 10,000 subscribers before the new college football game drops. Appreciate y'all. But did y'all just peep Drew Aller on the Heisman watch over Stuart Hall? Over me? Drew Aller being a Heisman candidate is just blasphemy, bro. Blasphemous right there. But we're starting off the first game of the video here in a rigged matchup against Kansas State. And they're looking to make a statement. So we got to put them to bed real quick and fast. Or this could end up being very dangerous and a critical game for us. But now on first and 22 after that flag, we rush for seven yards. And then on second and 15, we get the ball again. And Stuart Hall... Finds a hole, but gets taken down after a 22-yard rush. And then on third and two, we just pick up that first down marker easily and then pick up another 20 to add to it. Come on, man. So our team ended up with a touchdown that drive. And now we're on our next offensive drive near the end of the first quarter. We get a nice little shovel pass from the QB. And Stewart is just running through these boys like they're dog food. It's too easy for him. As on his next play, he provides another hole and picks up another 10 plus yard gain. And then on first and goal, we just run straight into the end zone, barely getting touched. The first defender to lay hands on me was after I crossed the end zone. No diddy. And now on our next offensive drive, the score is still the same as the Wildcats couldn't do anything to our dominant defense. And we're looking that same way on offense as we're remaining very poised, but diligent and still putting in work and belt to ass. I'm feeling like Stuart Hall is about to get a big run soon as on second and five, I cut to the outside, see no defenders as our teammate picked up that block and then hit a spin move and get jiggy on him, picking up a 36 yard rush. And then on third and one, I get stopped. And now we're on fourth, but I'm a no huddle this bitch because I believe in me and I believe in our team and our O-line was looking very good today as we pick up the block and just fight our way to that first down, baby. What did Stuart Hall eat this morning? Because he's looking like a man amongst boys. Look at this play. He just ran the whole team over, basically. And then we ended off the drive with a field goal. And now we're in the second half here. The Wildcats still have zero points on the scoreboard and we're up 17 and looking to add more. As on second and 10 here, I go for the screen pass, let my blockers do their job, pick up a calm little five yards, and on second and four, I'm showing why I'm the best running back in the nation because I'm so versatile and dynamic, and no one can stop us except ourselves as my QB, Quinn Ewers, just always finds a way to sell the back. But regardless, though, we ended off that game, player of the game, 165 yards rushing, 82 yards receiving, capped off with a tutty, and now we're on to Iowa State, another ranked matchup. Why is our schedule so hard this year, bruh? But I'm going to just take it to the chin because this is what we're made for. This is what's going to help us get ready for that 12-team playoff and get ready to dominate and hopefully win it all. With every play I make, every yard I gain, we're pushing our team and ourselves closer and closer to where we want to be. As on third and goal here, I catch this dot from yours and get into that end zone. Let's go. This is a great way to start off the game against the Cyclones here as I'm not sure how strong they are on offense. But in this game, I've seen crazy things happen, so we can't take anything for granted. And you guys have seen it with me too on this journey. 
So let's keep this momentum going forward and keep pushing as that's what Stuart Hall does on this drive as we're currently tied 7-7. But on second and two, Stuart Hall catches the ball through the middle and runs up and gets a 13-yard reception. And then on second and goal, he just gets jiggy and slides into that end zone. That boy will always find a way to get him some cheddar and get into the spot that matters the most and feels the best. No diddy. And now in the second half, we have a calm little 10-point lead. But as I said, and we'll keep mentioning, we can't look too far ahead or get ahead of ourselves, and we gotta stay focused on the task at hand as our QB just do a dot to Worthy right there, and then we pick up five yards on the very next play, and then on second and goal, I'ma just run and use the legs my mama gave me and put them to work. Stuart Hall, your boy, going crazy, giving us that 24-7 lead. But, I'm not gonna lie, they fake came back, and now it's 24-17, and now we have to score here to keep ourselves feeling comfortable, feeling good, and feeling healthy about getting this W right here. As on fourth and one, we go for it, and your boy, Stuart Hall, picks up that very important conversion. And on first and turn, he just runs over someone and picks up eight yards. And second and two, he just, yeah, I, I guess it's, I, it's looking like a GG to me, fellas. My boy is just running through that defense. There, where is the Cyclones run defense? That shit is non-existent. As Stuart Hall is running straight through those boys, and now it's basically GG's. Yup. Game is over. Your boy Stuart Hall went crazy. Player of the game again. 110 yards, three touchdowns, 80 yards receiving, and another receiving touchdown to add on top of that. Now we're ranked number third in the nation, baby. And we're going against Oklahoma State and near stadium. And look at here. First play, Stuart Hall. Let's go. Can he take it all the way? And yes, he will. But Chad, I got a question. Was that Stuart Hall's Heisman moment? Me personally, he got so many, I can't even count. What would be his Heisman moment? All I know is, if Stuart Hall's not the, at the top of the Heisman watch list, we right for sure. There's some, there's, there's gotta be something wrong with the system. Something gotta be broken, a glitch, a bug, just something gotta be wrong. And then look at Stuart as he starts off the second quarter with a tutty. Texas runs through Stuart. Let's go. And then in the span of about three minutes, give or take, we went from 14 up 14 to seven to down 14 to 21. What is going on here? But let's see if we can get a quick score before the half ends. As with less than 30 seconds left, I get us down to around a 25-yard line. And our team ended up tying up the ball game. And now in the second half, we start off with the ball. And it's looking like a great drive. Our team is getting all the yards and doing all the right things that we should be. And on second and four, I basically get into the end zone. And then I fumble. Oh my gosh. I fumble. Yo, we better not lose this game. Because if we do, this is this might fall on me, boys. I'm not going to lie. But I really just fumbled at that goal line, bro. A fumble at the goal line is crazy. Stewart. And I think he has 99 carrying, too, which is insane. Imagine fumbling at the goal line with the 99 carrying running back, bro. This was going to hurt. But what bothers me more is that it seems like when the team meeting me most, coach took me out of the game in fourth quarter. What is he doing? And then we head to overtime now. And Coach Sarkeesian doesn't even let me put a hand on the ball. And Quinn Ewers just sells the game, man. Look at this. Fourth and seven. What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing, brother? You lose to a four and four unranked team, bro. So much for a Heisman moment, huh? Jesus, bro. To go out like that is crazy. Thankfully, we're still in a 12-team playoff contention here as we're currently ranked number 11th as we're facing Baylor here at home. So this should be a good game where we should end up taking a W as we get off with this big run to the outside. Your boy Stuart Hall broke off for that 67-yard touchdown run. Wow. Hey, that could be a Heisman moment. I'm just saying, just saying. But I feel like I'm sensing a different type of hunger and fire from this team now after we took that disappointing loss to Oklahoma State last week and now it seems to me that newfound hunger and grit and fire is being shown on the field early here as I get that five yard reception and then on first and ten I break off that tackle and drag a few defenders to pick up another five yard rush and then on first and ten here near the red zone we pick up another five yard rush and then on second and eight QB dots me up and I get that nice ten yard touchdown reception. Quinn Ewers finally making good decisions I see. Could have did this last game in the fourth quarter. Told Coach to put me back in. And definitely no T. Could have hit me. Just saying.
With first to 10 here, we pick up this dot nearing the end of the first half. Can we get another score here as we're currently only up four points on these Bears? And I can't have what happened last week happen to this week as we catch another pass here, tiptoeing out of the sidelines. And then we find a blind spot in the middle of the field, catching a pass there, and our team ended up scoring a touchdown. And I'ma almost do it here as I tried to break out and speed my way to the end zone, but I got pushed out by some lousy defender. And now on first and 10, we pick up another nine yard gain. And then we run the HP toss on the goal line. And your boy with 99 speed, 99 excel. How do you expect me not to get up in there? No pause. Diddy. Chill. Now we're in the fourth quarter here. Up 31 to 10. This game is basically over. I'm just getting garbage time yards here. Just beefing up the stats. Making sure your boy get that Heisman, huh, coach? I see what you're doing here, buddy. So they gave me the rock last game. I'm still I'm still disappointed and sad about that L, bro. Like we shouldn't have caught that. And now if we catch another L for the rest of the season, we're out of the 12 team playoffs, conference championships, and maybe possibly the Heisman race. As we pick up this last second garbage touchdown, ending the game off. Stewart Hall, probably going to get another player of the game right here. As he gets it with 204 yards rushing, three touchdowns, 77 yards receiving with another receiving touchdown. And I mind you, that 204 yards rushing was only all 20 carries game? Is that not insane? Is that not crazy to think about? What is that an average of? Average of 10 yards per rush plus? And look at this, putting belt on the first play of the game. First rush of the game, bro. Going up against the number one team in the country, 11-0 BYU. As I'm saying that, BYU being the number one country in the world is crazy. That's just insane. BYU? It's like an 80 overall team. How is this possible? But we're currently down, as expected, to the number one team in the nation. And we've got to get back up in front. Get this game tied up at least as we're in the second quarter here. And this team is just... I don't know, man. I'm running all over them, but the score doesn't reflect how I'm feeling, how I'm rushing, how my legs feel. Oh my gosh, look at me getting jiggy on them, picking up that 11-yard rush. I don't know how I did that. I just got jiggy, put my legs to use, and then now on the receiving end, I'm catching 13-yard dots from Quinn Ewers here as this one on first and 10 ends up being a 16-yard one. And then on third and 10, we run the same HB angle, and I pick up the first down and more, tiptoeing and basically falling forward. And thankfully, my team got a drive on that possession. And now we're back on offense with a chance to tie up the game. And if coach is feeling risky, go for that two point to get the league, even though there's no need to. I'm just talking. I'm just chatting. But now on third and nine, I get the screen pass. And so I'm just trying to get my way to first down. Sadly, we couldn't do it though. And the next time we see the field on offense, we're now down 31 to 17 at the start of the fourth quarter. We get a touchdown here, but. I don't know, man. This is scary, man. I'm feeling, I'm feeling my heart rate rise up a little bit. This is, this is, we're going against the number one team in the country, man. And on fourth and four, I pick up this clutch first down against the number one team in the country. Oh yeah, these boys not doing nothing to me as I run through the middle, see a big fat hole, but they close on me very quick, stopping what could have been a potentially touchdown play right there. And we end up getting a touchdown anyway, tying up this game. And oh my gosh, could we end up going to OT in this game? I see it as a possibility for sure as on first and 10. Quinn throws a tight pass to our receiver there, getting him that beautiful touchdown. And now we're in OT. We're down 52 to 45. We got to make some shake here. If we don't score, the game is over, ladies and gentlemen. As on first and 10, I cut to the outside and get in that end zone. I do it for my mama and my little brother. Them. Come on, man. Come on. Stuart Hall putting this team on the map, putting this team on his back. That's what he does best against the number one team in the nation. And now we're down eight. So we got to get the touchdown. And I get it here. And now we got to get this two-point conversion. What is my team celebrating for? Y'all better get your ass on the line and get ready for the two-point. As coach put his trust in me, calling that run play, calling that HP draw for your boy to get in and get those two points. And then on the next OT here, the score is tied up. Your boy catches a pass, and now we're running the HP sweep to the outside, but we get stopped right there, basically, picking up no yardage. But thankfully, our receivers come clutch, pick up the touchdown and a two-point, and BYU couldn't match us, and we get the W. And your player of the game, who other than just Stuart Hole, the greatest walk-on player ever, we really just beat the number one team in the nation. We're back to being top five in the nation, and now we're going against a six and five. Texas Red Raider team. And just look at this first play, ladies and gentlemen. Just look at this. The looseness, the speed, 
The acceleration. That boy always finds his way into the end zone, doesn't he? How could you not give this man the Heisman? I swear, if anyone votes against me, it gotta be on crack cocaine. I don't even know if I can say those words on YouTube. But now, nearing the end of the first half, for some way, somehow, we're down three points to the Red Raiders here. But we get back in the lead, picking up that touchdown with Stuart Hole, and he also set a new school rushing touchdown. Congrats, my boy. Look at you breaking records and dominating on the field, bro. I tell you, that Heisman is yours, buddy. Just trust me, daddy. And then look at how Quinn Ewers ends off that half here with that Hail Mary pass. The defender had no chance of getting that one. And now the score is tied 24-24, heading to the fourth quarter. This better not be a game you lose, bro. I'm already seeing the script. Look at Quinn Ewers selling. As soon as I see Quinn Ewers selling the game, I just know we might be doomed. And then look at what this fuck nigga is us. Holy, you can't make this up. What did I say, bro? And then we end up losing that game 27 to 24. What did I say just a few seconds before it happened? Before it just all crumpled and fell down, bro. And look at how we end off the season. We don't end up in our conference championship game. We don't end up in 12 team playoff. As I'm looking at the college football playoff holes, and we're 16th with Rutgers ahead of us. But thankfully, the only positive that came from the end of the season was us winning the Heisman as I had 600 first place votes, over 2,000 total votes. Your boy went stupid. And we also got a few other awards too with the Walter Camp, Robert Waxwell Award, Doke Walker Award. Your boy went stupid. And now we're getting a bowl game against the UCLA Bruins, a team we beat last year and I think we beat this year, if I'm not mistaken or something. But look at your boy going crazy on the first play. Running up the field, putting in work, putting in work as I get to the end zone right here. Tying up the game, 7-7, seven 70-yard seven, 70 touchdown run. Stuart Hall, even though our playoff aspirations fell short, Stuart Hall still came out to play for his team. And with his guys, one last time before leaving for the draft and seeing if he could make it to the playoffs at the professional level, I guess. Bro, I'm just really disappointed, bro. We had three years for Stuart Hall to touch the 12-team playoff, and we couldn't do it, bro. Started off at Colorado, couldn't do it. Sophomore year at Texas, had potential to do it, but fell short pretty early on. And then this junior year, man, we had it right in our fingertips, right in our hands. We went from top five in the nation to out of top 10, and then going back in the top five, we went over the top country. And then look at Quinn Ewers telling me, just throwing interceptions, being trash at this game, being trash in fast football in general. Just get him off my team, bro. We're fighting for our lives in a meaningless bowl game, bro. Quinn Ewers, bro. He's going to make me hate football, bro. And then look at this on second and goal. O-line don't decide to block. We get stuff right there. And then on what should have been an overhead high pass to me, Quinn Ewers just throws it straight to the defender. Oh, my God. Then look at this, bro. Ah, typical Quinn Ewers, bro. Just typical Quinn Ewers, bro. It just hurts my soul, hurts my brain. We really ended off our career with two back-to-back -back L's, bro. Regardless, though, Stuart Hall still had a great career. From ending high school with zero D1 offers and then walking on to Colorado. And then he dominated the Pac-12 as a true freshman, rushing for over a 1,000 yards, putting in that work. Then the sign and transfer to Texas, and the rest is history. As your boy dominated with over 3,000 total rushing yards at Texas. And then he ended up winning the Heisman and many different awards. Stuart Hall, you will be missed. Until next time.